So what is a web table and why we are trying to get the data from this web table? So the simple point is basically web tables are group of elements that are logically stored in a row and as well as a column format. Okay, so here we are gonna store the entire information in a table format in which we can organize the similar information over there. So W3 schools of web tables. I'm just trying to open this. Web tables are here on a W3 schools to show you a small example. So web tables W3 school. Let me search for this one so that uh, we can identify a table and we can see how the data is represented in terms of a table. Okay. okay. So here, if you observe this table, here the data is represented in terms of a table. See HTML table example in which company, contact and a country are three different columns of which we have. Company, contact and as well as a country are three different contacts whatever we have in which multiple rows of a data is there in a table. So if you observe this table contains a multiple rows of a data. So using a web driver program we need to switch to this table and we need to perform operations on this particular table. So, how can we switch to this particular table and how can we get this information using a web driver program is the actual concept for us. So, here I am creating a new script, new class, web30 with the main methods. So, I am just creating a new Java class here. To this Java class, as usual, I am creating a web driver object. Driver is equal to new Firefox driver. Driver dot manage dot window dot maximize. Driver dot manage dot window dot maximize is the another step. And the next point of what we need to do is, okay, once after we created this one, so driver.get. So I am asking my web driver to open this application, web tables application. And from there, once we are done with this one, I would like to perform a couple of operations here. The scenario one is, get all the data from a single column okay from a single column and the scenario 2 is get total number of rows so here instead of getting all the data get three rows of data from a single column and get a total number of rows and a scenario 3 is get all the data from a single column. Scenario 4 get all rows and all columns information. Okay, get all rows and all columns information. So these are the four different scenarios which I would like to perform on this application. So actually we have a different app on which we can retrieve these scenarios. Okay. So I'm trying to get that 
application URL. So here is the application URL. So actually we have a different application URL which contains a, a multiple rows of a data in a table. So this is the application URL. So I am updating the application URL in your program. That's it. So here, so this is the app URL, HTML reference. On this particular app, it contains a table which contains a two columns. So here, this is the first column in the table and this is the second column in the table and a multiple rows like a row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4, row 5, row 6 like that we have a multiple rows of data. My first scenario is from this first column get the first four rows information like this one. I would like to get this information using a web driver program. So to achieve this one, what I am doing means I am opening my Selenium IDE here. Okay, I am opening my Selenium IDE here and from where right click on a second object, show all available commands assert element present. Third object show all available commands assert element present. Fourth object show all available commands as element present. So we added these different objects here. Now for each and every object I am changing the target to expat position. So I am just changing this one to an expat position. So for all the objects, for the three different objects, I changed it to an expat position. So if you observe only TR of a 3, TR of a 4, TR of a 5, the remaining information is one and the same. Here in a HTML table, TR represents a table row. So here the TR is going to represent a table row. TD and a TH represents a table column. TD comma TH represents a table column. Whereas a T body represents a whole body present in a table and a table defines that it is an HTML web table. So these are the four different HTML tags available. Table which represents a whole table. T body represents a body in a table. TR represents a table row. TD and a TH represents a table column. So here if you observe in a Selenium IDE only TD value is a changing. Sorry TR 3, 4 and a 5. It is changing. Remaining is one and the same. I am copying this info from the, running, uh, from the Selenium IDE and I am pasting it out over here. I am splitting before number and an after number. Try to store it in a before and after number I am storing it in an after and this number is changing as a 3 comma 4 comma 5 that's it before i 3 4 5 and an after so it means a before plus i plus after so i value is changing from 3 4 and a 5 which will be generating the desired x path of an object so here what I am doing means in my selenium I am creating a for loop into i is equal to 3 i less than or equal to 5 i plus plus and here I am defining a two variables string before is equal to and then a string after is equal to so before the number I am updating in a before after the number I am updating in an after variable so here if you observe before plus i plus after so string plus 
integer plus string so here these are two different data types which we are trying to add okay so these are the two different data types which we are trying to add in order to add different data types in your selenium script it's not possible for us to directly add them using a java methods for that i'm using a string builder in java so here new string builder dot append before dot append i to this one i am just appending this i and for that one i am adding a before to okay just a second my eclipse editor is not loading so just give me a minute to write this append but prior that whatever the logic i am trying to implement is this logic clear for everybody so i am trying to implement the before plus i plus after and i am changing this i value from 3 4 and a 5 so dynamically it's gonna generate an x path of the desired object so which i can use it in my program and i can execute my scripts okay fine let it load vijay sirisha pankaj and everyone is this point clear for everybody uh sir could you show us once again how you are adding from ide uh, how we are capturing the properties see can you just show it once again the only thing what i am doing here is uh, perform a right click operation on your desired object and then at last you can find an option as a show all available commands from there simply select assert element present Okay, let me minimize this one and a browser here. So right clicking on this object, show all available commands. It contains an assert element. I'm clicking on that. Go back to Selenium IDE. See from this assert element, I'm changing it to XPath position. It is generating the desired object, current XPath position. That's it. So it's going to generate a direct XPath position. That's it. So here I am appending I to that and I am appending after to that as we are adding a multiple data types I am trying to store it in a string val is equal this val contains an x path now driver dot find element by dot x path of a val dot get the text so identify that particular object and get the text from that object system.out.println system.out.println text present on the link is plus text that's it now when I run this script automatically it's gonna capture the information from the specified objects whatever the objects you have specified it will capture the information from that objects itself and it will print that information to the console directly it will print that info to the console okay so that's the basic thing guys so this is the way how can we get the information from this first three rows okay from the first three rows this is the way how can we get that information okay cool so uh, before moving ahead uh, guys just give me uh, yeah I'm back so the script got executed and returned these values to the console let me add a quick command here to terminate the browser too that's it okay fine done up to here so once we are done up to here okay so once we are done up to here the another point which we need to consider is this is all about the scenario one 
whatever we have covered and the second scenario is get total number of rows say to get the total number of rows from this table right click on this second link inspect element with a fire bug so we noticed that usually the table will have a hierarchy for this one which is the tag name is a table t body tr and a th so here if you observe we are in a td it contains a tr there is a multiple trs above which it is having a t body above which it is having a table property in which it is having a class table is having a class name so copy the class name for this table i remember the export the syntax as slash slash tag name open braces at the rate of property type is equal to property value this is the one so here if you go back in the selenium ide the tag name is a table slash slash a table table open braces at the rate a class is equal to close this and now click on a find see within the selenium ide whenever you are clicking on a file observe this line here it's just a highlighting with a border over there with a green color border it is a highlighting over there okay so it means we can confirm that this is a table and in which it is having a t body inside that so this is the x path for the table which i have a written now i am copying this a whole program i am pasting it once again and i am changing this name to web 31 web 31 and now from this let me open this a program now here web 31 now what i am trying to do means i identified the x path for a table so driver dot find element by dot x path so i identified the x path for a table and i have kept it in my selenium ide so copy the x path from our selenium ide and paste it out over here and i am storing this information in a web element table is equal to okay web element table is equal to I captured this a table information and I stored it out over here as a table. Once after we have a defined this a table, we know that within a table we have a multiple rows and a multiple columns. So here, table dot find elements. So within the table. i am identifying objects of which are starting with a tag name as a tr i know that all the rows are within the table will start with a tag name as a tr and so i am asking my script to get all the objects which are finding in a table with a tag name as a tr and i am trying to store it in a string li is equal to but it is a throwing an error message suggesting me that you should store this information in a list of web elements we know that find elements is a command which will return a multiple objects so it should return a list of web elements here let's see uh, it's uh, eclipse editor is not responding it might take a couple of seconds so let me mouse over on this one once again i am changing this to list of web elements hence i am finally returning as System dot out dot print ln total number of rows in the table is plus li dot size. See this logic is a similar to that of identifying a total number of values from a drop down. If you people remember, we identified the drop down first, and from that drop down itself, we captured all the values. 
the same way here also we are identifying this table first from that table we are capturing all the information and here instead of a 5 I am changing it to li dot size which is the total number of values in the table okay which is the total number of values in the table now let me rerun this program and see how this is gonna print the values to the console it's getting executed giants. and in the program once the application got loaded it will start printing those values to the console so it should return the values one after another see all the values in the table will be returning to the console this is the way how can we return values to the console okay is this point clear for everybody Vijay Sirisha for this one okay fine let me show you the experience and guys if you have uh, any questions uh, do text me in a chat window in the meantime I will explain you about how to generate an XPath see I know that this is the syntax for an XPath slash slash tag name open braces at the rate property type is equal to property value see if you don't remember that one search for this one within the selenium IDE slash slash so here see slash slash tag name so this is the syntax for xpath so xpath selector if you remember html tag name open braces property type is equal to property value at the time we have a return the tag name is the input over there as of now this object tag name is a table which is having a class property that's the way I have a replace it this one that syntax so slash slash a tag name open braces at the rate the class is equal to class property I identified the table but in order to identify the total number of rows you should go in the table body under the body itself you have these many number of rows under the body itself you should have these many number of rows hence what I am giving means I am just giving this a slash T body that's it slash T body represents a table body nothing more than that so this is an X path for the table which is identifying till the body and within the body you have a multiple rows we identified up to here which internally contains a total number of rows that's the reason I asked this object dot find the elements which is getting the total number of elements for me that's it which is getting the total number of elements for me okay is this point clear for you Pankaj and everyone or do you want me to explain this logic once again now we can also copy this X path from the fire path right see let me uh, instead of writing the... yeah we can do that let me show you that so right to click on this the table inspect element with a firebug so here I'm scrolling down till this table header okay so this is the one now switch to the fire path copy this table uh, this one and try to select this table okay. so it's directly just a second it's see if you observe it's just recognizing this page as directly these are columns but it is not okay so yes this is the table okay so if you observe this one it is a highlighting a complete table information okay so to cross check this one even I'm copying this table information from here okay the table information and within the selenium IDE place it and I click on a find so it will identify the table but in addition to this one for sure I need to give T body the reason is within the body itself you have a total number of rows so you need to specify this body then only it will get that information nothing more than that either you can get this information from fire path 
or you can write it by your own that's completely up to your wish whatever you want you can do that so but for sure you need to specify the tea body as all the rows are there within this the body itself so now this is the way it got executed so this is all about the second scenario get the total number of rows get the total number of data from the first column okay fine done so the another point that is the last scenario in this application i would like to print okay in this application i would like to print the tag name and as well as a description okay i would like to print the tag name and as well as a description for these two okay so how can we get both the tag name and as well as a description for that i am copying this program and i am pasting this script again and i am changing this script number to 32 and the delete this chunk and open this 32 okay so you know this whole script will get all the tag names right i know that the whole script will get all the tag names i would like to get the descriptions for that what i am doing right now how i have identified all the tag names the same way right click on a second description assert element present third description assert element present fourth the description assert element present that's it so if you go back to these objects change it to expat the position change it to expat the position that's it see the first four are expat the positions for the tag name the second four are expat the positions for description the basic difference is earlier it was a td slash a here it is a td of two which is a second column td of two means it's a second column but before the row or else before the number it is the common only this after number is a changing so here i am copying this after this number part Control C, go back here. Here I'm making a note as string after description is equal to, okay, after description is equal to. And now here below code will generate x path for description. So here, new string builder dot append of before only dot append of i dot append of after description, the whole thing I am converting into a string string xp description is equal to now here driver dot find element by dot xpath xp description dot get the text string x1 is equal to system dot out dot print ln x1 so within the same for loop okay within the same for loop here the first three lines of a code is returning the tag name and the next three lines of the code is returning the description. So when we execute the script, both the tag name and the description will be returned to the console in parallel. Okay, both the tag name Okay, so it's gonna execute. It's getting executed. If you observe, 
See, the tag name and the description both are returning to the console. At a time, both the information is returning to the console. Okay, fine. Okay, so that's fine. Is this point clear for you all? How to get this information? Or do you have uh, any specific questions about this? Pa, Vijay, Sirisha, Pankaj and everyone. Guys, am I clear for you all till now? Fine. Done. Fine. So turn up to here guys, so uh, as said, uh, I'll 